I'll ask Brother Raymond Cruz, if he would, to open us up in prayer tonight, and then we'll sing a congregational once he is through praying. Amen. Amen. Turn in your hymnals to page 393, key of B-flat, when we all get to heaven. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Help us sing tonight. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the cause of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. Jesus will sing. Come on, let's sing that chorus one more time. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise tonight. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. It's been requested y'all sing the Jesus song again you did this morning. Amen. Get whoever's going to sing with you to come on up. We're going to do it again. They enjoyed it this morning. Amen. I want you to listen to the words of this song. It's a new one that they just learned. and um, just, uh, just believe in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, he's good. Amen. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Call shame's done and all is stealing. And you're desperate for your healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave
He can 
give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He can change your life. Amen. Give me the key of C. We're going to take you from the latest, newest song to an old one. Amen. Key of C. If there's ever been a time, I'm telling you, with everything that's going on, we ought to, we ought to have a longing to want to be with the Lord. Amen. I know he's coming. He's coming very soon. Amen. There's a light in the window and the table spread in splendor. Someone standing by the open door. I can see the crystal river. Lord, I must be near forever. And I've never been this homesick before. See the bright light shine. It's just about home time. And I can see my father standing by the door this whole world has been a wilderness and i'm ready for deliverance lord i've never been this home sick before i can see the family gathering Sweet faces, they're all familiar. No one's old or feeble anymore. This old lonesome heart is crying. I think I'll spread my wings for flying. And I've never been this homesick before. See the bright light shine It's just about home time And I can see my father standing by the door This whole world has been a wilderness And I'm ready for deliverance Lord, I've never been this home sick before. This whole world has been a wilderness, and I'm ready for deliverance. Oh, Lord, I've never been this home sick before. Amen, amen. Just good to see everybody out tonight in the house of God. Uh, we've changed up on the way we're doing our offering because of the uptick. Of course, we're everybody that's seated on this side, as you leave tonight, you can drop your offering off in the plate and exit out this door, and then everybody that's over here can go out that door and put the money in the plate on the way out on that side. Amen. That way we're not congregating in the center. And uh, we're trying to do everything we can um, to be safe. And uh, as we said, you know, this, um, this too shall pass. I'm just, I'm just praying God put an end to it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just put an end to it. it ain't a, it's not nothing about politics. It's nothing about religion. I mean, even the vaccinated are getting sick with it. So they, they're kind of they're at a... Uh, point now to where they don't even really know and you say well you know somebody that's vaccinated and sick yeah I spoke to one this afternoon that's been vaccinated for four months and is sick with COVID very sick so this is a uh, very serious thing 
And we want to continue to keep our doors open, and we just continue to ask everybody to follow the protocols. If you're sick, stay home. If you come in contact with somebody or been exposed, stay home. And uh, let's just continue to keep these doors open and worship the Lord. Amen. What a, what a message this morning, God. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on God. God gave us a word in this place this morning, and I'm just so thankful for that. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Acts Chapter 1, stand for the reading of the word, Acts chapter 1. I'm going to read one passage of scripture. Pray for our youth. They are having their services over in the educational building, our youth tonight. Grades uh, 4 through 12, they're over there and, and uh, ministering tonight, so keep them in your prayers. Amen. Acts chapter 1, and look with me in verse 8. But you shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let me read that to you again. Talking about power here, this verse. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I want to witness to you tonight because we, come on, and you're probably thinking, well, he's going to preach on the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Well, not necessarily. I, that's going to be part of it. But I want to preach to you on a message, on a thought tonight, the silent witness, the silent witness. Now, we all know about preaching and teaching and, and talking to people about the Lord, but I just feel like within my spirit, I just feel a heaviness upon my spirit that God in this time that we're in is requiring silence from the church so that he could speak to us on matters at hand. Amen. So we're going to preach tonight about that silent witness. Brother Richard, if you would, lead us to the Lord tonight. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, we need to be a silent witness. This is post-resurrection that we're preaching about tonight. This chapter, Acts chapter 1, is not only post-resurrection. This chapter is about the Holy Ghost. Amen? This chapter is also about prophecy. And this chapter is about power. He said, but you shall receive power. What kind of power? Well, I can tell you it's miracle working power that you will receive. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It's specifically stating here in this verse that the Holy Ghost, this power, is inherent in the Holy Ghost and solely in his domain. There's power in the spirit. You remember what he told Zerubbabel? He told Zerubbabel, he said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So we know that there is miracle working power within the domain of the Holy Ghost. And he said this, and you shall be witnesses, witnesses. Does it mean witnessing to souls? Come on, that, that's, we're, that's our mandate when we're saved. When we get saved, we got to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. It's not necessarily witnessing the soul, but rather every one of us giving in every capacity for Christ to the point of even laying down our own life for him. That's the power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, 
Come on. He's going to operate within me in every capacity for the glory of Christ Jesus, even if I have to lay my life down for him. And he says, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Can I tell you tonight that miracle working power can be ours. It can be ours. Can I tell you tonight and submit to you tonight that the power of the Holy Ghost, come on, operates in the parameters and the domain of Jesus Christ. And what he's done for us at Calvary. Can I tell you tonight and submit to you tonight. That without the Holy Ghost. We're never going to really know who Jesus is. We're never going to really know who Jesus is without the spirit of the Lord. And when he said take that out into this world. He's saying take the work of God worldwide. It's not to stay just at home, but we are to go worldwide. Now, a lot of us cannot travel overseas because of jobs, maybe because of health problems, because we're on up in, in age. We can't travel like we used to. But I can tell you there's a lot of restrictions on travel right now with everything going on. But we can give, and we can send it overseas and trust that it, come on, in the hand of responsible hands will get the job done of spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we can't, every one of us can't go, cannot go overseas. But what we can do is be a faithful witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can tell our mission field, one preacher said this. He said, we fly over the mission field to get to the mission field. There's a mission field right here, right around this church, right in your neighborhoods, right on your jobs. There are people, come on, that need the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost has empowered us to be a faithful witness for the Lord. But sometimes that witness will involve silence. Got quiet in here. Got silent, didn't it? Sometimes it will involve silence. Now the Lord spoke to us this morning in the Sunday morning message. And he said, you, we, we've got to have, I mean, it was just, it's just as real and, and as plain as a nose on your face. God said this morning that we, can't, we cannot take part of his word. We cannot take part of the Lord Jesus Christ, just part of it, just a little bit of it, and let the rest roll. We've got to take all of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, he, the, only, the only thing that should, somebody's wanting in the door there, uh, Bull, let them in. I've seen somebody coming to the door. The only place, come on, in that Bible where we find roll is where he rolled the stone away. And when Jesus come up out of that tomb, he did not come out of that tomb a half of Jesus. He didn't come out a quarter of a Jesus. He come out a Savior. He come out a resurrected Lord. He come out a King. He come out a soon coming King of kings and Lord of lords. He come out of that tomb so that you could have all of him and not part of him. We're not to take part of him and let the rest roll. And then we come back tonight and the Lord begins to speak to us. And he says, even being a faithful witness for the Lord will sometimes involve silence. The Lord Jesus Christ was accused of many things before Pilate. Matthew 27 and 14, it says, and he answered him. He was about to be crucified. And Pilate is asking him some questions. And he answered him to never a word. In other words, he never said anything to Pilate at this point. Isaiah 53 and 7, that was a prophecy fulfilled. Insomuch, the Bible says, Isaiah 53 and 7, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Pilate was astonished that Jesus defended himself, not at all against these accusations, seeing that they could lead to his death. He did not defend himself. 
He was led as a lamb to slaughter, the Bible says, but he opened not his mouth. Ecclesiastes 3 and 7 says there's a time to rend and a time to sow, S-E-W. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. There's a time for everything. And we, come on, as Pentecostals, oftentimes we think we've got to be the first one to say something. We've got to be the first one to, come on, shake the apple cart, rock it. I'm telling you, I'm feeling within my spirit, I'm feeling within my heart that things are happening the first time we wouldn't listen. All we wanted to do was just talk, talk, talk about how this happened and how that happened and how we can do this and how we can do that. And we've taken what we want and let the rest grow. And then now we're going through another terrible time. And God is saying to his church, listen to me. Shut up. Keep silent and listen to me. I'm going to lead you out, but you're going to have to open up your ears and listen to me and shut your mouth. Now's not the time to be saying this and saying that. Now is the time to pray. Seek the face of the Lord. Keep silent and let the Lord speak into our lives. You know, sometimes people will say unkind accusations to us. And boy, we get defensive. And you know what happens? More anger comes out of our heart. And this is just an attack of the devil. It's an attack of Satan. He's trying to destroy the church, trying to destroy a nation founded under God and the precepts of the word of God. He's trying to destroy a nation. He's trying to destroy a church. If the church goes, so goes the nation. I'm telling you, we, church, are the only hope for this nation. If you, come on, if the doors are closed on the churches, where are we going to gather? Oh, if they can close the door on the church, well, we'll gather at home. They'll get you at home. The disciples had to go in hiding to have church. Come on, Jesus. God is saying tonight, just keep silent and listen to me. I've got something I want to deposit into your spirit, but you're going to have to keep silent. You can be silent and still be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, turn with me there in your Bible, 2 Thessalonians. And look with me in chapter 2. Chapter 2 deals with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul writes, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. He's talking here in this verse about the second coming and the rapture of the church. Verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. And I'm going to tell you, false doctrine will do this to you. People talking when they shouldn't be talking will do this to you. Neither by spirit. Listen to what Paul writes here. He says that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled by this false doctrine. Neither by spirit. In other words, there'll be messages in tongues and interpretation in tongues that'll seem like they were of the Lord, but they were not. Because people... In the time we live in right now, people are scrambling, trying to find every answer they can, and somebody always wants to be a showboat. And they'll stand up and say, I've got all the answers. They'll give a message. They'll give tongues, interpretation of tongues. But come on, if it does not line up with the Word of God... Well, I'm not going to allow it to come into my ears. I'm not going to allow it to come into my heart. Sometimes we just need to be silent. And he said in verse 2, Don't be shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word. Oh, there's a lot of them claiming they in this day and age they have a word from the Lord. Nor by a letter from us. Not even a letter. 
a letter claiming to have a prophetic word for you as that the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, what Paul is writing here, that the day of the Lord is at hand. And that we're about to see Jesus and Satan would even deceive the very elect of God. You, you know what? And, and this is why, this is why when Jesus was brought before Pilate and he uttered, he didn't even utter a word. It's because he knew in the flesh the more that he conversed with Pilate, the harder it was in the flesh to go to the cross. Come on, some people, they'll just, they'll just talk to me and they'll talk to me and they'll tell me this and they'll tell me that. And I'll listen and they'll probably even think I agree with them a lot of times. But it's not that I agree with them. It's, that it's that just that I'm not going to be drawn into a conversation that's going to end up getting me mad. Come on. Or end up causing heartache. Or end up pulling something, come on, from me. Or a word that goes out that should never go out. People being used of the devil will do that to you. Especially in this day that we're living in. And I'm telling you, it pays. God will open the door for you to speak. But there'll be times when God will say, be silent. You remember when Moses brought the people to the edge of the Red Sea? Man, they were complaining. They were complaining. They said, didn't we have enough graves in Egypt? Wasn't it better in Egypt? How could it have been better in Egypt? You were in Egyptian bondage for over 400 years. And they said, we had it better in Egypt. And Moses said, stand still. Just zip it. Stand still and watch me work. Hallelujah. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, I know this is hard for a lot tonight. Because our, come on, our automatic thing is to talk. And if there's anybody who loves to talk, it's me. He said in verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't listen to that. That is scripturally incorrect. For the day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Could it be we are experiencing that right now? Mm. This first time y'all heard me preach, ain't it? Y'all about to see the preacher come out in there. I'm telling you, that's how close we are to the rapture. Oh, for that day shall not come. Don't let them deceive you. Except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. He said in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So that he is God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Don't you remember that when I was with yet with you, I told you these things? <laughs> Jesus had said, I've all, come on, Paul said, I've already told you about what was going to transpire. But for some reason or another, you have seemed to forgot, you've forgotten it. And now you know, verse 6, what withholds. That he might be revealed in his time. What is that that withholds the Antichrist coming on the scene? It's the church. And the devil knows it. The church. Got to be zapped out of here. Before the Antichrist is revealed. Now I ain't going to say, I, I'm not, I don't know if the Antichrist is on this earth right now. I don't know. But I can tell you this, before he's revealed, it's going to be a catching away of the church. Oh, pastor, you're one of those pre-trib preachers. That's right. I believe he, come on, he's going to pull us out of here. Whether you're pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, you better be ready when he comes. Oh, for the mystery, he said, 
in verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he now who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. For the mystery, for the mystery, let's look at that verse for a minute. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. In other words, false teaching is already here. Only he, who is he, the church, who now lets, who now hinders evil, will let, will continue to hinder until he, the church, be taken out of the way. We're going to sit right here until Jesus gets ready to come back to get us and we're going to block everything the devil tries to attempt to do. He tries to steal. He tries to kill. He tries to destroy he hates the church. Jesus died for the church. The devil don't want the church. He wants the doors closed. He wants people not gathering. They don't come on over in California. They hit last year. They want to find you for singing during the pandemic. He, he does not want God's people gathering together and worshiping. Because I need you and you need me. We need each other through all of this. Oh, just a smile when I come in the house of God from you just lifts me up above the shadows. And then verse 8 says, and then, what is then the rapture of the church? Shall the wicked, the Antichrist, be revealed after the rapture of the church? Whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them who perish. Because they receive not the love of truth that they might be saved. Verse 11 says for this cause God shall send them strong delusions. That they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But I like verse 13. Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that happens between verse 1 and verse 12. Oh, the rapture of the church, the seven years of tribulation, the revealing of the Antichrist. All of these things are happening. And then he says in verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God. For you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he, God, called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or or our epistle. Hallelujah. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And God even our father which has loved us. And has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Stand fast in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stand. It's not always talking. Stand. Stand in it. Hold what you've been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. I'm telling you, if, in, if I've seen anything in what's happened going on two years now, I've seen it put people in a place to be quiet and focus on God. You know, spoke, we, we oftentimes, somebody got a testimony, and they'll stand up in church and give a testimony, and that's great. But spoken testimony, it certainly has its place in the house of God. But our most effective witness is often simply our walk in holiness and faithfulness to the Lord. People are watching you. They're watching you. Oh, I remember reading the life. One of one of the I, I, I love to read books of, of preachers, old preachers that God just used mighty in their ministries. And I read about 
One of my favorite to read about is Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber out of the country of Wales that God had called to preach. Many miracles in the life. He never wanted fortune. He never wanted fame. When he, would, when he would pray to God, he said, God, I don't want fortune. I don't want fame. And listen, when he would preach, people would come up and just drop money on the steps while he was preaching. Because miracles was taking place. And I, I don't know if they, some probably wanted to bless him and some thought they could buy it. I don't know. But one of his prayers was, God, I don't want to be rich. I don't want fortune. I don't want fame. But I would like to have a few nice suits to preach in. And God always gave him the suits he needed. But I'm telling you, this man was so full of God. That miracles, signs, and wonders just followed him everywhere he went. I mean, he went into a funeral home of someone at a, at a viewing that had passed away. Someone that he knew. He went inside. Casket was open. The viewing was going on. True story. Grabbed the, come on, that corpse had already been embalmed. Grabbed that body out of that casket. Now, what would you have thought if it's your loved one and all, your mama, your daddy, and all of a sudden this preacher comes in in a black trench coat, a black suit with a white shirt, and just goes up to your loved one and jerks them out of the casket. But nobody stopped him. He didn't say a word when he jerked that body out of that casket. He took that body and he slammed it against the wall in the funeral home and said, Body, come to life. Death, leave. The body just slumped down to the floor of that funeral home. Everybody was, oh my Lord. What in the world? He just picked it back up put it back against the wall, and said, death, I said, leave. And all of a sudden, an embalmed body come back to life and walk out of the funeral home that night at a viewing. Man, I don't believe that. Pat. Well, let me tell you, the same Jesus that was living on the inside of, come on, Smith Wigglesworth was the same Jesus that went to the tomb of a man that had been dead four days uh, and stood at that tomb uh, and said, let the, uh, come on, take the stone as we preach this morning and roll it away and called him by name, said, Lazarus, come forth. And he come forth out of that tomb. Come on, he had already started to rot. Well, one of the ladies said, he stinketh by now. But he come out. But then, there was one time, several occasions, that Brother Wigglesworth would go to a hospital to visit and get on an elevator. And have someone in the elevator and he'd never say a word. And the convicting power of the Holy Ghost would move upon the person that was in that elevator. And before they got to the floor and the doors opened, Smith was leading them to the Lord. Never said a word. You say, well, pastor, I don't know about that. How, how are they going to know? I'm telling you, it's the anointing and the power that we read about in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And every one of us can have it. We can have the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on. Uh, it's not about me. Uh, if I talk too much, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to glorify myself. Uh, oh, I can tell them about Jesus. I can lead them to Jesus. Uh, but if I talk too much, uh, I'll be glorifying myself. Uh, and I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to glorify the Lord. Uh, oh, listen to me what do you think happened uh, my god i feel the holy ghost uh, what do you think happened uh, when he was standing before Pilate uh, and he uttered not a word uh, the governor was marveled in other words uh, the holy ghost was dealing with Pilate when jesus was not saying anything i want that kind of power in my life the bible said they laid their sick in the streets, on cots and blankets, 
that perhaps the shadow of Peter would pass over them and they would be healed. Many were healed just by his shadow, the book of Acts tells us. He never uttered a word. We are the body of Christ. We've got a mouth to, to sing of his praises. Just two Sundays ago, right down here, Sister Nicole was down here praying. We was praying for her, for her back. And all of a sudden, the power of the Holy Ghost came down on her. Nobody laid a hand on her. Come on, nobody was shaking. And one of, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm saying this nice. But one thing I cannot stand as a preacher is for someone to come down here and jerk somebody back and forth and around. Let me tell you, that ain't a God. That's not of God. Now, I know we got preachers that come by here sometimes, and even me, I can get a little rough. Melissa says when I pray for her, I'm like, Daddy told me of a man that was at the McLean Church of God, but when he was young, they'd throw a Bible at him. Some of you may remember. He'd throw that Bible at people and it hit them in the chest. They'd get the baptism in the Holy Ghost. He'd throw the Bible, they'd get healed. My God, if it'll give me the Holy Ghost and heal me, throw it and hit me between the eyes with it. Now, hey, I, if it's of God, come on, son, uh, come on, another story, true story. Another one of Smith Wigglesworth was doing a revival, and a lady come up with stomach cancer. Oh, go on her way out. I mean that there's no hope. Uh, come on, in her eyes, there was no hope in the doctors. Uh, she was going to die from stomach cancer. He took that old big fist when she come up on the stage. He took that big plumber's fist, and he punched her right in the stomach. They said you could have heard a pin drop in that revival. She went to the floor, moaning, groaning in pain. When he punched her, he said, cancer to leave. And the people began to just talk amongst her, say, I can't believe he just hit that little old lady right in the stomach. And he just looked at them, and, and they was in utter amazement, astounded. My Lord, man, would you just hit that 80-year-old woman in the stomach? He said, I know that did not seem right in your eyes. But the kingdom of heaven suffereth uh, the violence and the violent taketh by force. Guess what? She come back two nights later. Cancer was gone. I'll take a punch in the stomach if it means I'm healed. Now, don't, cut, don't think I'm going to punch in the stomach. I'm just letting you know that what happened with Nicole can happen with you. She was just praising God, and all of a sudden, the hallelujahs began to come out in tongues. And I didn't even know it. Man, I was up here. I, Melissa was down there. She heard it, but I didn't know it. And when Nicole testified, she said, God not only healed me, he baptized me in the Holy Ghost this morning. You know what happened this morning when we brought her up and she stood right there? The minute we laid our hands on her and began to pray for her, she began to speak in authoritative tongues. I mean, it was like somebody had been speaking for years. I'm telling you, it's real. It's real. Thank God that we have the times that we can speak. That we have the times. Come on. Uh, <laughs> listen. I, I, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do as a pastor. And ever a pastor that's around in the county and, and further out. One of the hardest things we've had to do is to book a, an evangelist and then have to cancel them. I've had to do that three times. Four times with the men's conference. We had to make that decision. It was a hard decision to make when you see other churches having revivals. Other churches doing things, and what they do is their business. But let me tell you, in 2020, before COVID broke out, we had a great camp meeting here at this place. We went from that time all the way to the next March. We had one little revival with Brother Adam Ful uh, Folgem during May, a little youth revival. 
three or four days or three or four nights. Everything went good. We went right on through the holidays. Did, did, did not have another homecoming. Had to cancel Brother Lamar. Then we come back this past year and God allowed us to have camp meeting. I believe God was telling us, church, until I'm ready for this to be over with, I'm going to allow you at times to feel my presence like you've never felt it before. I'm going to allow you at times to experience things that you used to experience. But I'm allowing all this to happen because I need you to be a silent witness. How are you doing and how are you living for the Lord through all of this? Because we can talk all we want. Brother Lamar, I, I just feel so sorry for him and praying for him. He's been trying to come after time after time. Loves this church. Loves to come preach for us. We love to have him. Wonderful preacher. Brother Eddie, Brother Brian was scheduled to come. Wonderful preachers of God. Hardest thing is to pick up that phone. And you call and say, hey, once again, I hate to tell you, we're going to have to cancel. And you know, I get to thinking within myself, me and Brother Richard was talking about this. I get to thinking within myself, well, pretty soon if we keep canceling, maybe they just won't ever come back and preach for us. But let me tell you, that's how not, that is not how those men of God think. Because when I called, two days later I get the call back that the one that was supposed to come and preach come down with COVID, him, his wife, and his daughter. God, folks, is in control. And God is saying, just be silent and watch me work. And when I bring you out, come on, we, 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 we was thinking this thing was over with here a while back. Come on, we got, got back, let's start booking revivals. Let's start having, let's start having all these things. And God said, hold on a minute, stop. Come on, be silent. I ain't through, I, I'm not through talking to you yet. Because we can testify. But our most effective witness is simply our walk with the Lord. The Bible said that Enoch in Genesis, the Bible said Enoch walked with the Lord and was not, for the Lord took him. He was walking with God and God took him. Him and Elijah, Enoch and Elijah never seen death. Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot of fire, up into heaven. He didn't die. And Enoch never seen death. He walked with God. Do you think that when Enoch was walking with God, that Enoch was doing all the talking? I don't think so. Because if I was walking with God in that type of that fashion, I'd be listening to what he had to say to me if I'm truly walking with God. Because he has the last say so on anything in my life. You know... What we preached about tonight is, is an example that there are those that are out there in the world that are unbelievers. They may ridicule. And it may seem like they don't want to hear anything we've got to say. And at the time, probably don't. But if we'll just live the life before them, be an example, whew, they'll be hungry. To see it. They'll be hungry to see Christ in us. They can say all they want. I don't want it. I don't want nothing you've got. But they really do want it. That spirit wants it. Our bearing. Our attitude. Our countenance. Even our personal appearance. Give a constant though silent witness. Of who our master is. And what our life goal is. Think about that. I know this ain't a shouting message tonight. But we need to hear from God. That God is requiring us to be silent. And listen to him. 
even then. I, I'm talking just, just what the Lord give me. Our bearing, our attitude, our countenance, even our personal appearance. You mean even the way you look, Pastor? Yes. Yes. I don't believe that. God sees the heart. That's right. God sees the heart. You don't mow your yard for about three months, and you don't take your trash out for about a half a year, and when people drive by your house, they're going to say, what in the world is that up over there? Like Melissa's mama used to say, she said, you don't have to live in a two-story, $400,000 home to make it look good. Come on, you take a little old. Come on, dude, we've been in foreign countries before down there in Honduras where they live in a little biz queen shack, and you go inside of that thing, and they've got it all decorated up and nice. It's home to them. Home is where the heart is. Personal appearance. Silent witness. Our attitude, our countenance, our bearing. It'll witness to those who don't know Jesus, who we serve, and where we're headed. You know what? If I could say anything else to you guys tonight before we close, it would be this. That everything we're going through right now, we must be certain that we are always in harmony with God's word. Because some people that's out there that you run into, you'll be the only Bible they ever see. Oh, listen to me. Wouldn't it be something, something, if you're walking in Walmart one day or in Winn-Dixie and you're just going through the frozen peas and the frozen corn and somebody just down from you looks at you says, there's something different about you. You never said a word. I've had that happen before. There's something, don't I know you? We get to talking, never met each other before. But let me tell you about my Jesus. Silent witness, the way we live our lives, the way we walk. The way we talk. You know, with everything that's going on, I, I've even heard Bible saved, spirit filled believers just all, come on, supposedly, all they do is it's doom and gloom. It's doom, it's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. The world's going to be here when you're gone. When I'm gone, the world's still going to be here. God's still going to be here. Christ is still going to be glorified because I'm looking forward to that day. I, come on, whether it's I speak it by my mouth or I live it, I'm looking forward to that day when the trumpet sounds, uh, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. But that's not the end. Because at the end of that seven years of tribulation, oh, they're going to pull those horses. They're going to pull those steaming white stallions out of heaven's barnyard and stables. They're cleaning them up now. They're getting them ready. We're going to come back with him out of heaven, Jude said, I saw the Lord and 10,000 of his saints. I'm telling you, we're going to climb upon those horses. He's going to take that long Galilean leg, put it over that steaming white stallion. He's going to come back out of heaven. We're going to come with him. He's going to do battle. We're never going to have to lift a finger. And we're going to live with the Lord for eternity. You know what Jesus is going to say when we, when we, I, sometimes I've got a, a movie theater mind. <laughs> I try to picture what that thing's going to look like. Bible says he's going to come down out of heaven to do that great battle in the valley of Megiddo. Once that's over, he's going to lead us through to a place called the Eastern Gate. 
Y'all remember that old church song we used to sing years ago? I will meet you in the morning just inside the eastern gate. Oh, those gates, Brother Nabil says those gates in Jerusalem are locked up. They've been locked up for years. But oh, those gates are going to swing wide open. Swing wide open, you gates, ye gates, for the king of glory is coming in. They're going to open up. We're going to go in. We're going to rule and reign with Christ for eternity. You're going to be a witness to all of it. Let me tell you something before y'all come on to the instruments, because if you don't, I won't shut up. <laughs> Let me tell you something. How many times have people's lives been touched by a simple card being placed in the mail and mailed to that individual and you never said a word? How many times, even in this pandemic, have we took food to people's house that was battling COVID-19, dropped it off the porch, never said a word? How many times have you went through McDonald's drive through to get a Big Mac with extra pickles, large fries, and a big old cold large Coke? I like, I like y'all. Y'all might not like them. I do. And the way, and the woman working the drive-throughs just started and having a bad day. And all you do is smile, just a smile from somebody. This fella right here, you work, you work, you work at Walmart. You did right. Used to. I I remember, I don't remember how many times I came in, and, and I really don't. I know who you are, but what is your name? Kenny, there's, I couldn't tell you the amount of times that I've come in Walmart when he worked there. And Kenny would smile at me. And let me tell you, you made my day. Just somebody smiling because there's so much mess and garbage and sorrow and death. Just a smile. Just a hug. I know it's hard to hug right now, but... A hug, a handshake. Old brother Ernie Dawson used to come in, and crazy as this sounds, he'd come in this church to sing for us, and the first thing he'd do is come up to me and plant a big old wet one right on my cheek. <laughs> first time he did it, I was like, what in the world? He said, greet your brother with a holy kiss. <laughs> but you know what? I'd give anything for him to walk through them doors and plant another wet one on my cheek. Amen. 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 He may not have said a word, but just a kiss on my cheek meant the world to me. I'm telling you, folks, God is calling us in this time to be a silent witness. Live it, live it, live it, live it, live it, and let them see it. Stand to your feet as they begin to play. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. The Apostle Peter writes, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You know, I got to looking at that and just start thinking about it. You know, this is exactly what Jesus said in Luke 9 and 23 when he told us to deny ourselves and take up the cross daily and follow him. Do you think you're going to be doing a bunch of talking while you're toting a cross? No. If we truly deny ourselves, now we've got to tell people, don't, don't think you, come on, you, I'm going to try this. Let me tell you, God will put them in your path. And the moment they open their mouth, you open your mouth and go to talking to them. But I've seen people just go in places, Brother Richard, I've seen them go in, Brother Derek, and they just go to telling this one and, and telling that one and just kind of getting overbearing with it. And they end up making them mad. People will hear things, but a lot of things they'll hear, they'll let it go in one ear and out the other. But they'll never forget what they see. They'll never forget what they see. And I'm telling you, I want to live it every day. 
I want to come on deny myself. I want to take up that cross every day. I want to make certain my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you there's tremendous benefits that you and I are not acquiring and not taking because we will not deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow him. Just be quiet and follow him and let him lead us. Look what he says there in the latter part of verse 10. He says, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. Conditional. Not unconditional, but conditional. If you do these things, you shall never fall. I don't know about you. But I want to be in harmony with God's word. I want to deny myself. I want to take up his cross. I want to follow him. And just as he stood before Pilate with all the accusations being thrown at him, he stood there and he uttered not a word. There's a time to speak, as Ecclesiastes says, but there's a time to be silent. And I believe we're in that time right now. Where God is desiring to speak to his church once again. He said, you wouldn't listen to me the first time. So now are you going to listen to me this time? Yes, oh God. We repent. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Let us hear from you. And we will do what you tell us to do. How many of you in here today will say, Pastor, I heard what you said this morning. I want all of Jesus Come on, I'm going to let the rest of that stuff just roll on. I'm going to be a silent witness for him. I'm going to let him see Christ in me. I don't want them to see me. I want them to see the Jesus in me. I want them to see the Holy Ghost in me. I want them to see the God in me. Heavenly Father, I've delivered your word this Sunday night. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we pray tonight, Lord, let us repent. Father, we must repent. You said in your word, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, and repent that you would hear from heaven, forgive us of our sins, and heal our land. Father, we are in repentant mode tonight. And Father, when we get up from this altar, we're going to shine the light of Jesus Christ so that people will see that you are alive and well in our lives. Father, help us, Lord, to be the one to send the card. Help us, Lord, to be the one to make send the text. Help us, Lord, to be the one to make the phone call, the one that sends the food. God, the one that just gives the smile. Help us to be that that you've called us to be in the name of Jesus. How many of you tonight, before we pray, will say, Pastor, I've heard God. I'm going to be a silent witness. I'm just going to let Jesus shine in my life. You can come around these altars. You can pray at your pew. Do whatever you feel. You can stand against the wall if you want to pray. But step out somewhere and let's pray. Come on.
sing it tonight. Sing it one more time. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Don't forget, Tuesday night, we're still uh, at the present time because of the uptick in the cases in Baker County. We're only going to do live streams, so we will not be having in-person services here Tuesday night. Give us a little bit of time, you know, and pray that nothing comes up, but we got some time. So it'll just be live stream only Tuesday night. We'll do that until we see the cases start to go down. Then we'll go back to the in person. So be in prayer for this Tuesday night. Matter of fact, I think Brother Joe is going to be preaching this Tuesday night, Joe Long. So remember him as he uh, preaches this Tuesday night on our live stream service. We love you and we appreciate you. If you would stand, we're going to dismiss. Remember, get all of Jesus. Just be silent. Come on and let him work in your life. Come on. Bring her up, bring it on up here. My niece is in the hospital. She is uh, battling COVID-19. They had to increase her oxygen today. She's at Baptist Hospital she, uh, from 12 to 15. Um, Y'all know all about that. But we know the one who can heal. And she's with us on the phone right now. So I want you from the hospital, I want you to stretch your hands this way towards Melissa to the phone. Just face him, Melissa. And let's pray and command this, these lungs to clear up and that body to be healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Daddy. Yeah. Okay. Let's remember Joni. Amen. That God will not only heal her, save her soul. Amen. Okay, remember Joni. Yes. Okay, let's remember Brother Su or Sister Susan, Brother Billy. Amen. Stretch your hands this way. We, we could be here a long time calling out all the names of people that's battling this stuff. But I know the name of one. COVID-19 does not mean nothing to him. All he's got to do is wave his hand across this area and it'll be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we pray, Lord, as our niece Jennifer is on the phone right now live with us, I pray, God. Heal that body. Lord, go to where she's at in that hospital. Father, clear those lungs up. Remove that COVID. God, help her, God, to be able to breathe without the oxygen. Lord, send her home from the hospital to her husband and children. Father, to her family. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. We stand upon the authority of your word. 
that by your stripes we are and were healed. Father, for Joni, heal her, save her. For the Godwin family, heal them. Lord, save them, God, tonight. Lord, for all of those that are battling this dreaded virus, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. God, touch her right now, Lord, and heal her body, Lord, for your glory. Father, for your glory, heal her. Manifest yourself to her right now in that hospital room, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Come on, give him a big hand clap of praise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you. She's just having her a God moment. Let her have it. Amen. We love you and we appreciate you. Let me tell you something. If your baby held up in that hospital room not knowing what tomorrow holds, I believe you'd be crying out to God too, wouldn't you? Brother Chris, good to see you, brother. Amen. Good to see y'all here with us tonight. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's dismiss. And remember, if you're on this side, you can exit out that way. Put your offering in the plate. All those on this side, exit out that way. Put their offering in that plate there. Brother Raymond, if you would, dismiss us.